Good morning. Today I'm making a manchego style cheese. It's manchego style because it's cow's milk and not sheep's milk. I am doing about eight gallons of full fat milk. I am adding a quart of store-bought whipping cream because we calf share and so we do not get as much cream from our cows. I have made this twice before, three times? I'm not sure, once already this week. It was chaos. I didn't follow times. We'll see what happens. The recipe is coming from home cheese making and it's on page 188, Manchego style cheese. This recipe is actually super straightforward and simple. If you are looking for an easy recipe to start with, this one might be a good one. Manchego can be eaten early, like only after a few weeks, or it can be aged for a much longer time. So there's flexibility there too, which makes it a good starter cheese so you can taste your product earlier. I usually use my clabber culture, and that's what I used earlier this week when I made the cheese, but I saved whey, so this is a little experiment to see how it works with the whey cultured cheese from a previous manchego. I've already heated up the milk to 72 degrees. Now I'm going to add calcium chloride. Because I'm adding heavy whipping cream from the store, you don't need to do that if you're using all raw milk. And you dilute it with a little bit of water and add that to the milk. I'm not gonna stir it too much because right away I'm gonna be adding the whey and so it'll get mixed in more. So here's the whey from the manchego that I made two days ago. I wouldn't wait for longer than, I don't know, two days, three days, maybe four days, but it's better to use whey as fresh as possible. So about two cups. There we go. This will be pig food. So this process is bringing it up slowly to 72, it's lower temperature, adding the calcium and the culture and then bringing it up the rest of the way. I forget what the reason is for that. I think it just kind of like helps to keep bad stuff out of the milk maybe. I think I'm gonna be in trouble. Adding this much whey. Oh dear, here we go. Oh, this is full. Yikes. All right, this is now going to rest for 15 minutes and I'm gonna leave the lid slightly cracked because it is so full. It'll like overflow it if I put it all the way in because of that indentation there. When I do a recipe, when I make a cheese, I often just jot down the bare bones of the recipe so that I don't have to look at the book or if it's on the computer, I don't have to look at the computer. And then I just tape it up to the wall. I have Gouda up there already, so now it's the Manchego. And that way it is right next to my pot and I can just look up there and see how many minutes, how many degrees, something it's supposed to be. It makes it very efficient. Now this is supposed to be raised to 86 degrees. It'll probably be at least 10 minutes. I got a little distracted and didn't come over right away and now this is above 86 degrees. It is at 90, 91. It's not a big deal, really. It sits for another 30 minutes to continue culturing and then we'll add the rennet. So now it's a teaspoon and a half of rennet. Dilute it with just a little bit of water because it is so full. I don't want to overflow the kettle. I've already pushed my luck tremendously. I can see how it's slowing down and getting sludgy. Ooh. Now we're gonna give this 30 minutes and then come back and check for a clean break. Yeah. I think we're gonna call it good. Because what happens now is you're going to cut this into three quarter inch columns and let it rest for five minutes and then break it up with a whisk. I'm going to give this just five minutes to settle before I start cooking it so that I can take off some of the whey. Five minutes is up, whoa! And now you can see all the whey came up, so we're gonna take off a bunch. Two days ago when I made this cheese, I saved about three gallons of the whey and made ricotta. I got a cup and a half, two cups of ricotta. It wasn't a huge amount, but it was enough that it was worth it, I think. Now I'm going to be raising the temperature to 102 degrees over the course of the next 45 minutes. Right now, this is right around 90, so that's about 12-ish degrees. Turning this on low, this is what the curds look like at the start. They're very soft. There are a few more big ones like that that just easily mush up. These curds are supposed to be the size of grains of rice, so they will be shrinking very soon and getting very small, but they stay pretty tender for the whole time because they're only going up to 102 degrees. They don't get very boingy or dry. They do dry a little bit, but not that much. You can see that these are very, very small curds. They look very broken up almost shattered, but they're not. And we're gonna do the squeeze test just so I can show you that this is not ready. So if you squeeze it hard, look at that, not ready. And they're not even sticking together. So I shut this off because it was getting pretty high. It was at 98, I think. I'm gonna turn it back on now. We have another 17 minutes to go, so I'll just keep bringing it up. We are right at 102 degrees. There we go. These curds, they do look like rice. Some of them are a little bit bigger, but they are quite small. They're beginning to firm up on the outside, but they are still juicy. They're not boingy. 
They feel like they're not gonna stick together. They feel like there's hardly anything in this pot. So let's do the squeeze test. It's still squirting out a little bit, see? But it's not quite as bad. And it's kind of sticking together. Oh, I'm not trying to squeeze it out. I'm just holding it firmly right now. And it's sticking together. I'm gonna say it's done. It tastes so creamy smooth the whole way through. There's not a rind on these at all. It's not egg white wet on the inside. It's very soft and juicy. I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes and then we'll pitch it. Ready? Yep. Okay, a little more. Keep going. Very good. This is four gallons. I'm gonna make ricotta with this way. Yeah. What I do often, warm way, soak the cheesecloth. Bring it out. And this is my mesh that allows me to fill this up. Ooh, there's a hair on it. What? You didn't see that. That allows me to fill this up higher and then I just take it out. It's kind of a brilliant little hack I'm super proud of. Oh, another little hack I'll show you. I just kind of scrunch this down in and then I take some clothespins and just make sure this doesn't fall in as I'm pouring the curds into here. This is also tilted up with a wooden spoon so that it tilts in. Lots of curds. Okay, I need to straighten this off though. I'm making too much of a mess. Take that side. We're gonna just dump it right here. Okay, that's good enough. Don't let it fall out. Stop! It's good. Can I eat this? It tastes like nothing. It's buttery though and sweet. It tastes like absolutely nothing. Yeah. Okay, fine. It's not even salty. No, it's not salty yet. It is full. So I'm gonna let this just rest a little bit to let the curds settle. And I'll just push on it periodically as it goes down before I begin to actually press it. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest. I smell a little funkiness that reminds me of when my mom used to make cottage cheese when I was a little kid and I thought it's made the house smell terrible. And this smells a little bit cloying. I'm just gonna let this sit a little bit. This isn't actually pressing it yet, it's just getting it ready. It hasn't been that long, but you can see there's still a lot of liquid coming out. But I think a lot of this is fabric that's under here that is getting bunched up. If I just smooth this out and flip it once, it will be smooth enough that I can get this going in. Yeah, this is knitting together quite well. Doesn't smell funky at all, it smells good. I think it might be the cheesecloth. So now this cheese gets pressed for the next, oh, I don't know, eight hours or so till bedtime. I'll flip it several times and I'll film when I flip so you can see it knitting together. But it's low to medium pressure and then it goes in the brine at bedtime. This is pretty straightforward cheese. Nothing complicated about it. It's like a mesophilic version of an Asiago of Parmesan. Just lower temperature and just a straight cooked cheese. I'm gonna press it down just enough to get it into that lip so it keeps going and doesn't get caught. <laughs> I'll come back in a few minutes and push it down more. So this is almost at 180, actually I think it is. And you can see it's rising to the top already. So I'm going to put yeah. in just some vinegar, not even measuring it. This is not quite four gallons. Woo, that's probably at least a third cup. I'm gonna stir. It never seems like it's very much. Like I did in that one video, which I think is just probably a difference in the milk. Actually, there's a bunch coming up. So I'm trying to like make sure the vinegar is stirred in. But I'm not gonna stir it for too long. I'm gonna cut the heat. I'll set the timer for 15 minutes and then I'll skim it off. Let's see how much we got. Oh, it's definitely more than last time. So apparently a manchego yields a fair amount of curds, but this gave me a whole bunch more than what I got with the cheese that I made two days ago, which was with a clabber culture. And this one was with the whey from that cheese that I made. And so maybe that changed the pH and gave more. I don't know. I think we'll be having nice lasagna tonight. So this is not shrinking down very much. Is that salt? Uh -huh. It's buoyant. It is. Is that the word? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> mm. 
8.9 ounces. That's 1.1 ounces. One pound, 13.6 ounces. So almost two pounds of ricotta. It is looking very nice, not moldy at all. A little bit of white is getting on it, the deer chicken, I guess. I'm just flipping it again and I'm going to stick it in the cheese cave just like this. It's gonna to be too dry, I'm sure. Things are kind of molding, but it's what I need to do for right now until I can get my lard stuff done and get all those cheeses wrapped. Okay, here's Manchego. See how blue it is? It's getting velvety and blue on the other side. Oh, there's water on that. Every now and then I'm coming in with this brush and I have liked this brush a lot. It's much more gentle than a vegetable brush, though it is still fairly firm bristles. I'm not gonna worry too much about the stuff on the sides because it is not too poofy. And then the blue goes there and I just scrub this out with dish soap and water. And now this goes back in the cheese cave and I'm just flipping it regularly. That feels a little, ooh, that's a little squishy right there. Maybe I should flip it more regularly. Today I was going to, I am going to, bandage wrap this Manchego style cheese. You can see there's a bunch of mold on it right there. And there's some blue coming up right there and right there. It feels firm. It is not cracking. However, I'm a little closer. Can you see this white stuff that's coming up? It is not fuzzy. It feels dry and gritty, a little bit granulated. It's bumpy, kind of like it has a rash. On this end, that feels much more consistent, but then it's like dry and bumpy around there and dry and bumpy right there. Remember how the one manchego I did that was in this little fridge out here and it got dried out and the inside texture was all gritty the whole way through? Today, I just opened a manchego that I've been aging in there and it is beautiful, but it tastes gritty. There's a pronounced gritty flavor to it. That is why I want to cut open this fenugreek gouda and see if that grittiness is also in there because then I will know if this cheese cave is not functioning correctly. I am concerned that this might be getting gritty. Like what is it with this dry bumpiness? I was going to bandage wrap it, but it also might just be fine. Like it doesn't feel dry, it's not cracking. It doesn't smell bad, it smells cheesy, a little bit basement, dusty, moldy, a little bit meaty, but very mild, like not much. <gasps> How much cheese can you sniff? The other manchego has a little bit of that grittiness around it, but not much. I'm gonna bandage wrap them. And I'm not gonna worry about getting all this mold off. I'm just gonna seal it in. This is the lard that I had in the basement. You can see it has some mold growing right there. It was a sealed container, but somehow it just got dirty. I don't know that that matters because it's gonna get moldy anyway and it doesn't smell rancid. I'll just take a little bit off. I don't need this much lard, but I'm doing this much right now because I am bandage wrapping several cheeses. So thus the large amount of lard. I also think that if there was any mold in this, I mean, I'm heating it up a little bit. That's gotta kind of kill stuff, right? Right. Now over here are all my cheesecloths that I have just cut off this bolt of cloth. I am not washing them. I decided they come from the factory. They're probably clean enough and I really don't care. They're gonna get moldy anyway. I'm just gonna slap this together. I'm not gonna show you everything. But if you want to see more detailed how to wrap a cheese with lard soaked bandages, for long-term aging. I have a video here about a Darby cheddar, I think. Also, I did a Romano. I've done several. The lard has mostly melted. And because these were not washed, when I opened them up, there's lots of little, ooh, nice and toasty, floaties all over the kitchen, all over me, myself. But I'm just gonna scrape them off. Eventually, it'll be fine, is what I say. The other reason I'm kind of doing this instead of letting the molds develop is I'm kind of sick of monitoring the molds. It just kind of gets to be a pain and I'm concerned because I'm not monitoring humidity that perhaps the cheese is drying out. So I figure a partial natural age rind with the natural molds coupled with the bandage wrapping might help the cheese even itself out. I think that's going to be good enough. It's not as hard as I often do where it's all soaked in, but I've been looking at pictures of other people who do this and sometimes I see that it's like almost just one bandage. It's very loose and it's not even, it's just kind of like lightly wrapped in lard. So I don't know which is correct. I'm just gonna try not to go overboard this time and see if that is perhaps sufficient. And see there's air pockets in there. But I don't know, the cheese is already moldy. Like really, does it really matter? You can see all the natural mold, this will all get moldy. I just slipped that manchego down there. And that's the other one that wasn't as moldy, but I bandage wrapped them both. It's really not getting any mold on it on the outside and it's looking like it's staying stable on the inside. It's getting mold. It feels totally firm and nice. I'm loving it. And this is the other manchego. It's time to taste the whey cultured manchego. I'm excited, let's do it. Here it is. It's like a little bit of mold. It's hard. It's firm and 
just like a cheese. Like, yay. Mm. I get some basement. I also get like a nutty smell, a little bit meaty. It's good. I think it's gonna be good. Ooh, just gonna cut through. Oh, that was easy. Yeah. Oh, there's some cheese. Look at that. Just kind of stripping it off. Isn't that cool? There's some more that's stuck on. Come on, come on, bandage. Okay, now there's strings on here. It smells of cheese, it smells of other things, but I don't know what they are. <laughs> I'm gonna clean this off by trying to get as much of the lard off as possible. There you get some of the mold off. It's coming off great. Once you just get this going, it peels right off. Wow, it's looking glorious. I'm concerned that this is gonna be a little bit gritty, like that manchego that I had been doing in this small cave. Oh, it's hard. Quite hard. Whew. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, that looks lovely. It's almost like a cheddar. It was dryish. I need my glass. It's better to see it with my dear. It tastes like a cheddar. Look how it crumbles. You see that? It just kind of breaks. It's very much like a cheddar. It's not gritty. I taste the edge, the rind. No weird flavor. It might be slightly gritty. Why is that? I'm gonna take that off. So I took off the rind and now I'm tasting the inside edge. Mm, no, not gritty. Just slightly more granular. The salt level is good. It's flavorful. There's like a brightness to it. I don't wanna say sharp. I don't think it's a sharp cheese, but it's not mild. There's a really good mouthfeel. There's a creaminess to it, but it's definitely a drier cheese. Not overcooked dry, just like a, like a cheddar that's drier. But it's not anything like the store-bought manchego I've had. It is salty. It doesn't taste farmy or sheepy. Okay, I would like to make that. I did not know this, but I really like manchego. New goals to aspire to. Who knows what this is? Okay, I have the other one. Let me go see if I can find the other one. You guys, this is embarrassing. I appear to have misplaced an entire cheese. Hang on. Oh my word, where the heck did I put a cheese? No, I found it. I thought it was backpacked. I bandage wrapped this sucker. <sighs> I don't want to open two of them now. Thought I should, I'm all set up. I gotta work quick. I gotta go somewhere. That's why I'm flustered. Thought I had more time. This one's looking a lot cleaner. It's beautiful. It's almost no markings on it. The lard off. Oi, it is hard too. Oi, this is really hard. It looks identical. It smells young still. Looks like a cheddar with those breakages and like drynesses. This one's a little creamier and the flavor is, I don't know how to describe it, maybe a little bit brighter or something. And this one is just a little bit more round, a little bit more full. The older one, the one that I clabbered with culture, the one that I cultured with clabber, almost tastes younger. And this one tastes like it's been aged longer. I wrapped them both at the same time. These are both identical cheeses except that this one is made with the whey from this one. It reminds me a little bit of Lancashire, or Philly, mild cheddar, maybe medium cheddar. It's buttery, salty, and now I have to wrap them all up and run out the door. <gasps> so there you have it. You absolutely can take whey from one cheese and within the next 24 to 48 hours, use that whey to culture another same cheese or probably a different one too. It doesn't matter. Usually you do the same one, but you know, you could swap them up, I'm sure. As long as you're doing mesophilic, mesophilic, demophilic, demophilic. In theory, though, maybe you could do whatever you want. I don't know. Try it and see. If you have tried working with whey to culture your cheeses, let me know in the comments. I'd like to hear your take on it, what you have learned. Also, is there a way to get cow's milk manchego that tastes as good as sheep's milk manchego? I don't think there is, but this is still a very good cheese. And manchego is a very easy cheese to make. Try it. So I'm tasting this again. And because it reminds me of a cheddar and this isn't manchego, this needs to have a name that adequately describes what it is. So I'm thinking manchetter, chedego, chedego, manchego, chego ched, ched chango, chedengo, chango. It's basically a cheddar manchego. It is on the salty side. And I know some of you are like, you use too much salt, Jennifer. And I probably do, but I've never had a bitter cheese. So there is that. And I like the salt. Should we see if it melts? That looks melty to me. But ooh, yeah, look at that. Uh-huh, it melts. Oh man, that's delicious. And then if you let it get toasty on the pan, it gets all crunchy. Cheers, friends, you know. Oh, 
Mm. As your answer, it melts. So right now I'm cutting off the little bit of the rind just because I don't like that part and I think it will be better without it. It seems kind of a waste, I know. But when you consider big wheels of parm, you always cut off the rind. That's why I would love to be able to make 12 gallon cheese or you know a 20 gallon cheese and then you don't waste as much rind. I could vac seal this and then cut the rind off later but I'd rather do it on the front end just because I want it to be ready to eat when I unwrap it. Chimango. Cheddar Manchego. Chimander. <laughs> okay I should stop.